Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is uh, kind of give you a quick little tutorial on how to factor a trinomial uh, when a is not equal to 1. And the really the only way I could think about doing this where it's not like so confusing is to actually just use an example and just kind of go really, really in depth uh, with my explanation. Now again, when, I, when we have a trinomial, we have ax squared plus bx plus c. So therefore, we can identify what our a is, which in this case is 6 our b, which is 4, and c, which is negative 2. So we can identify our a, b, and our c in, this, uh, in our trinomial. Um, now, it's important for us to understand, you know, I'm kind of going through a quadratic because I think that's the, you know, the easiest way to get started with factoring. However, this method, you know, we're talking about polynomials. So it could have been you know, x to the 6th um, plus 4x cubed you know, minus 2. We could be going through these exact same types of uh, polynomials where they're to a higher power. But the factoring technique is going to remain the same. That's what I really want to cover in this video. So when looking into factoring, just like when we factor trinomials when a was equal to 1, we're going to do the same, same steps by creating our little diamond. Or really, it's just an x, but I always call it a diamond every single time. Now, previously, we did c and b dot and plus. But in reality, it's really just not c. It's actually a times c. Okay. Now. When discussing a times c, um, you think about, well, why is it different from when a is equal to 1 and when a is not equal to 1? Well, let's look back when it was just c. Remember, a was equal to 1 um, when we just let up the c. So really, if I had 1 times c, then it still would have been just c. So really, there's no difference. I could have written a times c on um, the examples when there was not an a, because it was equal to 1, and it really wouldn't have made a difference. Now, um, moving forward with this, so now I need to multiply a times c, which is going to be a negative 12. And then I write down my b, which is 4. Now, when continuing of this, again, we need to find our two factors. We need to find um, our two numbers that are going to multiply to give us 12, add to give us 4. Now, before I even get into worrying about negative and positive numbers, just figure out the factors of 12. And it's preferable if you can do this in your head. Uh, 12 times 1, 6 times 2, 4 times 3. 3. Now, now I understand, though, that the product is equal to negative 12. That means one of my factors has to be negative. So for one of my factors to be negative, um, but, one, but when I add them, they're up to a positive. So therefore, I'm multiplying two numbers. One's negative, And then I add them, though, to give me a positive 4. That tells me that the largest of my factors have to be positive, And the smaller factor has to be negative, right? Because if you're going to add them, you're going to get a positive result. So in this case, I look at this, and I look at all these factors, and I say, oh, the only factors that multiply to give me negative 12 but add to give me positive 4 are 6 and negative 2. So the, now what we're cased with is now writing down the two um, expressions, binomials, that are going to produce this trinomial. And the biggest mistake that students make um, which I'll just write wrong, is to say that x plus 6 times x minus 2 is going to multiply to give us our product. And the reason why that's wrong is because, yes, 6 times negative 2 gives us, um, well, here in this case, exactly. 6 times negative 2 does not give us negative 2. And x times x gives us x squared, not 6x squared. So this is not going to work. So what we need to do to identify the two terms is there's two different ways I'm going to show you. And I'm going to do them in the same video. So I really hope this doesn't confuse anyone. But, which is kind of like a primitive, it's going to confuse you. Now, I really I want to show both methods because one is not easier than the other. Some people like one method. Some people don't like the other method. Obviously, either method is OK to use. But the purpose is to get doing more and more and more of these. So then we can eventually start doing them in our head. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this information and I'm going to create a box. Because if you have talked about what I've talked about a lot of times in this class is using the box method to identify multiplication as well as factoring. And basically, this represents an area where we have 6x squared here and we have negative 2. Now what I'm basically going to do is take my two new um, numbers that I determined from my factors and I'm going to write them in the area. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify what would be the side lengths for me to produce each area. Now you can be kind of haphazard about this and say, oh, 6x squared? Well, obviously, that can give us 6x times x, right? Does 6x times x give us 6x squared? Yes. However, you've got to be very careful, and you've got to kind of think ahead. 
Because if I put a 6, meaning that's the length of the 6, 6x times what gives us negative 2? And if you think about that answer, if you plug it into your calculator figure it out, you're going to see that it's a fraction. And we don't want to deal with fractions at all. So 6x and x are not going to be a good idea. Um, we can do a 6x and x, though, over here. So I could do x and 6x. I could also do a 3x and a 2x. It could work either way. Um, you could also, you know, but the reason why the 6x and x works is because 6 times 6x gives us 6x squared. x times what gives us negative 2x? Well, that would be negative 2. And then 6 times x gives us 6x squared. And then 6x times what gives us x? That's going to be a positive 1. Therefore, I can write my factors as 6x minus 2 times x plus 1. Where, if I wanted to um, take a look at this, I could even factor that out. Yeah, that, that goes there. So therefore, those are my two factored forms. Um, if we looked at the box, I'm actually not going to do this um, another way. I'm just going to leave it at this because I don't want to make too long a video because I can already see you're like, eh, everything. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we can use that area. I do show the other way, which is using grouping. Um, but at F right now, I'm just going to kind of leave it as this factor form. And you could even factor, um, factor a 2 out. So you're left with 3x minus 1 times x plus 1. And there you go. Then you could multiply that by through. So you could factor that out. So therefore, that could be your factored form, or at least one of your factored forms, to be able to get, um, to be able to get back our product. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't want to overconfuse or make the video too long. But that is how we factor trinomials when a is not equal to 1. Thanks.